Hey everybody, welcome to the Magic Weekly News Update for February 25th on the Mana Leak. I'm John as always, and the news is slowing down for at least a little bit. Only two big stories this week, plus an unexpected story time. Up first, the deck lists for the upcoming Challenger decks were revealed. These are the decks that weren't replacing dual decks. They were announced at the same time as dual decks were announced as being discontinued. Not replacing each other, but coming in as the other one's going out. And boy, these are not anything like dual decks. These decks are really, really good and even better than the early event decks uh, that we used to see. The decks are Hazret Aggro, which includes a Hazret, a Chandra Torch of Defiance, and several other rares, most with multiple copies. Vehicle Rush is a red-white-black vehicle aggro deck, which has an entire playset of Heart of Kirins, a Sky Sovereign, and again, a bunch of other rares. Second Sun Control is a blue-white approach to the Second Sun deck with a couple of Kefnets, three approaches, three Fumigates, and a playset of Irrigated Farmland and again, other rares still. And Counter Surge, a black-green winding constrictor, counter energy kind of deck, which has three Virtuous Gear Hulks, among other things. These decks all look pretty solid, and you could buy one and do okay at a standard event for sure, and with some tweaking, you can have a nearly, if not solidly, tier one deck. These have an MSRP of $30. We'll have to see if any stores jack the price up, though. I will do a big warning, though, but hopefully you're all smart enough to not need these. Yes, when announced, one of these was $80 worth of value for $30, and the others were like $75 and $65 and $60. No, that doesn't mean you're just going to magically make money off of these. A, the prices are already dropping for the big cards, and they'll continue to drop. Supply and demand. B, you're not going to ever sell cards at the prices that stores sell cards because you don't have the volume, the customer traffic, etc. that allows you to sell at those prices. As always, do not invest in magic cards. Wizards did not just give you a part-time job buying and selling these decks. But if you want these cards, if you want a decently competitive deck out of the box for a local standard event, these look to be an absolutely incredible pickup. I I'm really happy with these. I'm excited to see how these are received once they're released. The other piece of news involves some controversy, though I put that in heavy quotes because, spoiler, my opinion is that people are overreacting. Shocking, right? Anyways, at GP Lyon, Gabriel Nassif was playing against Thomas Langlotz on camera. He went to attack and he got blown out because he didn't realize that Thomas had a Dryad Arbor. Why? Because Thomas was playing the From the Vault Dryad Arbor, which looks like a basic forest. It has the big green mana symbol, it has the land border, it looks like a forest, except it doesn't say it is in the type line, it doesn't have art that a forest has ever had, and it has power and toughness at the bottom right hand corner. Twitch chat erupted, the internet erupted, pro players erupted, this card needed to be banned. Not Dryad Arbor, just this specific printing of Dryad Arbor. This is beyond ridiculous in my opinion and honestly feels a little like my personal friend got blown out by this so it needs to be dealt with because they're my friend. Uh, from some MTG personalities anyways. Now first and foremost Thomas Langlotz was violating a magic tournament rule. On camera at an event there's a very specific things that need to be done with the layout of your cards on the table and one thing is that a creature regardless of its other types must be in the top row of cards that must be the cards closest to your opponent that rule wasn't enforced properly likely due to the feature match area judge not noticing being busy with other matches uh, a judge's responsibility is to answer judge calls we don't really hover searching for those violations you can you need to alert us to those violations so I can't really fault the judge here for that. However, there isn't really a penalty assigned to violating this rule. They just put the cards in the right place when it's noticed, when it's called out. So the first discussion is, what do we do with players like Langlots who put their Dryad Arbor with their forest? Well, on camera, this rule of the MTR needs to be more enforced, in my opinion. Add a warning to it and watch for players who repeatedly violate it because they're clearly trying to gain an advantage from it. And gaining an advantage by breaking a Magic Tournament rule is cheating and is a disqualification. Secondly, and this will never happen, but I'd love to see it be applied off camera as well. I can't stand people who set up their boards in weird ways with the express intention of annoying their opponent. It's childish. It's a look at how clever I am kind of thing to do. Stop doing it. It's not clever. You're just a dick. So that's my take on that. As far as how the card goes, I love the card. It's gorgeous art. It's really unique. I think the card's a great piece overall. Banning a single printing of a card seems really, really stupid. As I said, uh, this all seems to be a massive overreaction because some people's friend missed something on board. I really hate 
the this was a Hall of Fame player who made this mistake. How does anyone else stand a chance? It's such a BS appeal to status, appeal to authority. Finkel blocked wrong and lost a Pro Tour Dark Ascension. Should we ban Galvanic Blast? Galvanic Blast, Galvanic Blast, for those who remember that. Uh, people miss things and make mistakes at all levels. So I flat out don't buy the argument of, this was Nassif who made this mistake. Clearly something has to be done. That's, that's bullshit. Anyone could have made this mistake. Pros make mistakes all the time. I don't buy it. So I want to see tighter controls on board state representation. I want to see people not being so reactionary when their friend makes a mistake. And I firmly do not think that this specific printing of Dryad Arbor should be banned. And remember, many of these people are the same people yelling on Twitter about wizards being reactionary in their bands. Anyways, with that out of the way, it's time for an unexpected story time. The Rivals of Ixalan story is over, but this week we actually got to see the other three potential finales. In canon, the Sun Armor marched on the empty Arazka, claimed it, and the residual power, power there, and set their sights on Torazon, the vampire continent. But what if the Merfolk won instead? Well, as Huatli stomps away on Zakama, Tishana hangs around in Orozka, thinking it would be a shame to leave the city empty. Huatli may have believed that a peace treaty was going to happen, but Tishana wasn't quite as optimistic. Humans suck. They may have made Orozka, but it doesn't belong to them. Tishana reaches out and calls for elementals to guard the city, as that night she would summon the rest of the Shapers to claim the city. The land below Orozka belonged to the merfolk, and so they would claim the city and rename it the City of Golden Water. They were here first. But what if the vampires claimed the city instead? Vona is unhappily following St. Alenda away from the city to return to Torazon, thinking how pathetic Maverin Fane is to be apologizing and asking for Alenda's forgiveness. Alenda asks Vona to speak her mind. She's clearly lost in thought, to which Vona replied she will not return to Torazon empty-handed. She was assigned to find the immortal son she was sent to conquer. Elenda calmly tells her to go then. They'll sail east. Vona gladly returns to the city to find it empty and hers to claim. She ecstatically declares the city has a butcher for a queen, ignoring the fact that something is moving in the city. But as she wanders through the city admiring it, the thing moving turns out to be an immense dinosaur, which promptly eats her. But what if the pirates took over instead? Revenge! Rescue mission! Revenge! Breaches shouts. Find Captain, he shouts at Malcolm as they fly above the city. Malcolm tells Breaches that both Veraska and Jace's orders were to let them go. As they circle the city, Breaches points out that everyone's leaving the city, everyone but us. One week later, Azor's sanctum is filled with tables of ale and cards. The crew of the belligerent have turned it into a gold-filled tavern. Co-Emperor Malcolm and Co-Emperor Breaches sit down for some gold and ale and cards. So... There we have three possible endings to the Ixalan story. As funny as Co-Emperor Breaches would have been, I'm pretty happy with the Sun Empire taking the city with the foreboding Torres on his next hook. It leaves the biggest hook for the return out of any of these stories, in my opinion. And yes, the vampire ending feels really bad for the vampire fans, where even in winning they lose, but the real-world conquistadors taking someone else's land analogy could have gone pretty poorly for a public facing company in today's climate all in all it was cool to see the other possible finales i did enjoy the public engagement here i think it's a really cool thing to do but i am very happy with it being a very occasional thing like once every four or five years so anyways that's going to wrap it up for the magic weekly news update this week let me know your input on dryad arbor is it a terrible card that should be banned do you think everybody's being reactionary where do you fall on it are you excited for these challenger decks are you picking them up what do you think of the stories? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can find me on Twitter at the Mana League. That's L E E K, like the vegetable, not the card. You can also find me at Facebook.com slash Mana League, Twitch.tv slash Mana League, and Patreon.com slash Mana League. Watch out for that Patreon. There is going to be sponsored crack a packs in the near future. It's not going to be one to one, it is going to be random patrons getting the cards each week. And it's not going to be that high of a, a, a donation to be entered into those draws. So check that out for sure. As always, if you like the content, click that thumbs up button. Click subscribe if you want to see more. And if you do have questions, comments, or suggestions, let me know. Otherwise, see you all next time.